can see you're doing at the moment is dangerous. So back get off! I don't get... Hang on. Go to hell. In 1998, the local authority of Haringey in London had received so many complaints about the stench and hygienic conditions of one resident's home, they declared it a public health hazard. The fine gentleman responsible for London's smelliest rat hotel was 81-year-old Gandalf the Grey. Sorry, no wait, I mean Edmund Trebus. His inability to throw anything away had consumed his garden and home to the point of having to squeeze himself through his front door and crawl through and over mounds of trash in his own home. Inside the house, I can only get here into this kitchen and climb over this heap. And right in the opposite corner, there, uh, there's a, uh, a bed underneath, but I don't even know up to now whether my television is still there. Mr. Trebus's house has no electricity, water or heating because he refuses to pay the bills. He has a huge bathroom though, called his back garden and for dinner he's eaten a can of cold beans over candlelight i haven't got any guts they turned it off you see as well as looking like an urban version of gandalf the gray mr trebus is a war veteran who fought on the front lines of france and italy and is a survivor of german concentration camps which understandably means he has the biggest fucking issue with authority and is as hard as nails. So in September of 1998, when Haringey Council sent Mike Cording with his porn star mustache and band of merry men to clean up the public health hazard, AKA Mr. Trebus' shit, and I mean his literal shit, <coughs> along with all the crap he'd been collecting in his garden, well, as you might have guessed, a World War II veteran and survivor of concentration camps isn't about to take any shit from someone with a ridiculous mustache. Instead, what went down that day, it was a battle between such disproportionate forces. David himself would be embarrassed he only fought one Goliath. And thanks to a very popular daytime TV show called Life of Grime, broadcasted by the BBC, we got to see the whole incredible battle. Let's jump straight into the action when the council stud muffin, that is Mike Cording, arrives at Mr. Trebus' house, AKA shithole. Mr. Trebus emerges to collect his daily water supply, unaware of what's going on. I think he's on his way. Oh, why did you come? You know why, Mr. Trebus? Let me, let me give you a hand to get down. No. It's not your property. I know it's not my property, Mr. Trebus. So, keep away from me. You don't take the care of my health. Look, I don't need any help I from can't. you. I can't. I'd sooner drop dead. You came to rob... Look, take that off. We can't, Mr. Trebus. Take that off, I said. They're building a platform to load the lorry You haven't up. got any access. You are trespassing. Do We've you got hear? a warrant. We've got a warrant to enter and clear. You haven't got a warrant. Show me that warrant. I'll show Come you, Mr. Trebus. From the police office. Police warrant. Yes. Magistrate, stick it up your chuffer. I'm sure by the context you've figured out what a chuffer might be. But just in case anyone is unsure, Mr. Trebus just told Pretty Boy Mike to take his warrant and shove it up his ass. Oh, oh, the magistrate's court. You want to come? You want to come at me with your pathetic magistrate's court warrant? Well, let me tell you, Mike, unless the queen herself comes down to clean up my garden, all of my crap is going to stay right where it is. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to take a shit and you're stood in my bathroom. Robbers and murderers. Get it down. I'm sorry, I can't take Get it down, Mr. Trebus. No. Get out of my property at once. Cancel. Get up. Okay. Mr. Trebus. Look. Mr. Mr. Trebus. Mr. Look. Trebus. Go, go to hell. Mr. Trebus, Look. it is a court warrant. Magistrate's court, stick it, it up your chapter. It doesn't matter who. Go away. Two times now he's told a government employee to shove his warrant up his chuffer. <laughs> I wish I had those kind of balls. 
They're huge. I'm surprised Mr. Trebus doesn't have to wheelbarrow his balls around like Randy Marsh in South Park. That is nice. That is nice. Like when Gandalf fought that beast in the Mines of Moria, Mr. Trebus is locked in a battle with Slick Mike Cording, and if he wins this battle, he will return as the White Wizard. Mr. Trebus! Go away! Mr. Trebus! Go away! Go away from my property! I'll have to... You shall not pass! You are trespassing! Get out of my property! I've got a magistrate's warrant there. If you don't let us carry on with our work, I'm going to have to no, call I'm the police. No, I'm not going to let you carry on. Can we carry on with our work, please? No! Okay. Mike's coming up against some hefty resistance here, which... You can tell he's not too used to. Normally, the allure and power of his mustache would have charmed his prey into submission. You or I would be but a moth to the flame. But Mr. Trebus, being the grey wizard that he is, can defend himself against Mike's siren song. So Mike calls the police because he knows he's up against a formidable foe. Could you try and get PC Broom because she knows all about this case? But they won't arrive for another hour or so, so that gives... Mr. Trebus, plenty of time to go on the offensive. Mr. Trebus. Look, that's my property. Don't I know it's your property. I'm, I'm so back it off. I don't dispute it's your property. I'm Would you please have the courtesy you. just to let me speak? Mr. Trebus. Oh, shut up. For just over the last year, I've been trying to persuade you, ask for your cooperation, so we could provide you with better living conditions. It's not already You don't yet. want to know. You refuse to cooperate. You keep accumulating rubbish. Pretty boy Mike, rubbing it in that he can say big words like accumulative. Fuck you, Mike. Causing not only a nuisance, but it's now prejudicial to health. And Precisely what horrors lie buried in Mr. Trebus's garden won't be revealed until the clear up gets underway. You are trying all you Whenever that may be. Start dismantling it. Go well, for I'll it. start with it, and then that might cause you bigger problem. Now it will cause yourself problems, Mr. Trebus, if you try and dismantle it, because it's not your property. Ooh, how frightening, Mike. I'm sure he's going to leave it alone now. You really told him when you whispered that behind his back. Mr. Trebus may be 81 years old, but he can still defend himself, taking the law and the scaffolding into his own hands. Mike can only marvel at his determination. Did you do them up very tight? Yeah. Well, let's hope so, because you look like a pussy if an 81-year-old wizard tore down your scaffolding. Just saying. Until the police come, I can't do a bloody thing, because he's... Yeah, because he's... If, if they're not... It's time to ring him about quarter to ten. Mr. Trebus, you, you say I'm not interested in your well-being. I'm very concerned that you're perched up on a scaffold. All right, now let's go to the Mr. Trebus fucks given scoreboard. Uh-huh. It looks like that's still a big fat fucking zero. Also, can we get a rewind on if the scaffolding was done up tightly? 81-year-old yeah. climbing the scaffolding like Spider-Man and tearing it down like the Terminator. Mr. Trebus is relentless. Even Gandalf would be intimidated by this man's actual power. The police are on their way, but to a Polish war veteran who survived a German concentration camp, they're little more than a minor irritation. Hi there. Not so bad. Um, what have we actually got? Right, the scaffolders were building a platform because the, the lorry that's going to clear it is, is going to have sides versus the height of those scaffold tubes there, so they need to, you know, access to the lorry, and he's basically, within the last five minutes, climbed up there and slowly dismantling it. Good. Chapter first. Yeah. Um, can you come, just come down and speak to me for a little bit, please? No. <laughs> I think we could chalk up Mr. Trebus' views on the police as fuck the police. I honestly admire Mr. Trebus so much. I hope I have this much fight in me when I'm 81. I think this is beautiful. You could tell even the policeman was stunned. Can you come, just come down and speak to me for a little bit, please? No. Probably questioning his own authority like an insecure boy. Please come down and speak to me. Who are you representing? I'm a police. I'm from the local police station. Local police. So I've come to. I've come, I've come to speak to you. I had enough of you. Right. You you knocked out my. I can't hear door. you, Mr. Trebus. I'm not coming down. Mr. Trebus, what you're doing that is dangerous because that could well collapse. Not my business. What? Not yours. I love that he thought there's a possibity here that the police 
had come to arrest the prick with a mustache. <laughs> who are you? Who are you representing, huh? Is it me or is it him? Choose, choose wisely, pal, because if it's Mustache Mike, you're going down with him. Well, yeah, he's, he's taking it apart. He's just gonna throw it out. Uh, He'll have to take it off him anyway. Yeah, I'm wasting my time with you. Well, what I'm gonna say to you is what I consider you're doing at the moment is dangerous, yeah? Please okay, stop. Then. Yeah, otherwise... That's only endangering my right. Okay, it's true, I'm leaving you for a moment. Can I ask you all to back away from this scaffolding because I've now considered this is going to start getting dangerous. Can we move right back? It's getting so bad that old Bill needs to exert some authority, just anywhere, to anyone who will listen. Because Mr. Trebus is like a black hole to authority. Once authority crosses the event horizon, that's it. <laughs> just sucks it up, it's gone. Where's Singham? when you need him. He's probably the only police officer I'd trust with this case. Something tells me though that Singham would side with Mr. Trebus and would whip Mike's mustache straight off his face with his belt. Go and see a solicitor and Mr. Trebus has been talked down from the scaffolding but still won't let the work resume. The council may well improve the property but they'll charge his estate over 30,000 pounds for the privilege. I know he will have ignored requests, obviously, to have cleared his garden himself, but hitting him with a £30,000 bill, which is what they're gonna do, seems grossly unfair when he's blatantly living with a mental illness. I mean, the breadcrumbs aren't that hard to follow. You know that old boy who survived the Nazi concentration camps? He has the biggest issue with authority and has the strangest habit of not throwing anything away. It's almost as if he has an irrational fear of everything he owns, including his identity and humanity being taken away from him. I can't for the life of me think, why? Anyway, should we forcibly clear away all of his stuff and charge him for the privilege? I mean, all I'm saying is I feel like there's a solution here that works for everyone. Like letting him run a scrapyard or a local tip or something, some innovative solution where everybody wins. I can appreciate it's your home, and you've lived here all this time, and it must be very, very upsetting, okay? He wants to involve you in this. He wants you to help him. He wants to actually, they don't, they're not just gonna take everything away and throw it away. They want to go through it, and he'll go through it with you there, so, they, so you don't lose anything that is important to you. While he's taking a cigarette break, Mr. Trebus puts in a call to his solicitor, which must be a very confusing job. Okay, uh, yeah, let me just see if I, understood the situation correctly. So you told the council employee to take the warrant, the legal document, and shove it up his ass. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, uh, and did he? See, I think, I think if, if you could put, put a front door on Yeah. Then I think he will cooperate to some extent with helping you with the removal of the stuff at the back and the side. If, it, if, if it's all hinges on the front door, I will, um, even if I put it on myself, Mr. Trebus, if, if, if this all hinges on a front door, I'll see what I can arrange to get a front door put on for you. Once I've got the front door safe, then you realise there won't be any more danger of uh, burglars. Oh my God, in Mr. Trebus's little mind, he thinks the council are there because they're worried everyone's gonna steal all his awesome stuff. <laughs> he thinks all this commotion is because he has valuables on display, which obviously everyone covets. You can tell by my garden, I am a man of culture. I have many, many treasures in my house, like this antique KFC bag, bog roll, or used Tesco blue and white stripes packaging, for instant chocolate. They, they can put in your front door, but you've got to cooperate with moving of the rubbish at the side. Okay? No, not, not till I feel safe. Mr. Trebus, do you agree to that course of action? Yes, the front door. Yeah, and then once that's done, they'll start clearing the rubbish out. Do you agree to that? No, no? I'm going to clear myself. No. I don't want, my deeds won't be charged. I do it for nothing. I know massage has been taught you at great length. I think we've discussed enough. If the environmental health officer wants to actually execute the warrant and go in, Look. if you prevent him from doing so, you'll be arrested. Look, why don't you suspend the blooming Haringey, what's his name? environmental office, including the local police. I thought we were yes. getting somewhere, but I don't think I'd like safe. to get those back on site okay. to erect right. the platform. No, they are not going to 
to take the rubbish out. Stop doing Mr. that. Trevor. Stop oh, doing that. Okay, Mr. Trevor. Yeah. Go on. So next bit I'm not going to show because Mr. Trebus, as we all know, never gives up and he does in fact get arrested and it's just not nice watching an 81 year old man get arrested in my opinion. So he spends a night in the police station and when he comes back the next morning though work has begun on clearing his garden and a night in the police station has done nothing to cool him off. If anything he's even more pissed now. <laughs> That's my property, those items from the side gun. Can I just show you something, Mr. Schreiber? So what? How would you like to live next to a pile of rubbish that's stinking and infested with rats? So you could show they're dead, right? Well, that proves... No, it costs thousands of pounds. The Queen, our Queen here, to, to keep a squad killing rats at night time at the Buckingham Palace. And don't give me all that rubbish. What Mr. Trebus is saying is that Buckingham Palace and his house are basically the same thing. He and the Queen are living it up very similarly. <laughs> That's an old wiring loom out of a car. Yeah, yeah, Cloth yeah, braided. Yeah, it's totally yeah, rotten yeah, and yeah, it's yeah. useless. Look, but there, there are coils of cables of, and so on. All right, you make a good point, Mike, but just hear me out now. Okay, the, the coils. I'm just saying, maybe we should keep everything. <laughs> this little back and forth goes on for the next 30 days. Mr. Trebus and Mike argue like a married couple. Mr. Trebus, you, you, Mr. Trebus, you, when we, hang on, hang on, please hang on. Mike finds another rat's nest and Mr. Trebus tells him to go fuck himself. Mr. Trebus, can I just show you something? You see all this chewed up paper here? Would you have any idea what caused that? You did cause it. Me? Oh yeah, I often eat paper. You're making me work twice as hard. You know as well as I do, that's the remains day. of a rat's nest. You know as well where you are wrong. 30 long days of blood, sweat, human filth, rat nests, and God knows what else later, and the garden is finally clear. It looks like a beautiful space. Hang on, there's a rat behind you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't worry. <laughs> The garden was finally cleared. After all this, with his garden reclaimed, let's see if Mr. Trebus feels any differently now he has this nice garden space. I'm very bitter. That's a shame. <laughs> Look, that's my garden. And I, I am the only person which has got the right to decide what to keep in my garden. Anyway, the BBC stopped by two years later to see how Mr. Trebus was getting on, so let's see how he's getting on. It's amazing what one man can do in two years. Another pair of trousers, look, they are surplus, apparently, but they are all new. Marks and Spencer, I mean, they are not bad, but what's his name? That's all new, do you see the short pants? All new, right? It's a bit too colorful to me, but, well, you never take them off the, uh, in the public, so I'm not worrying about it. Jesus Christ! How has he managed to fill the garden up in two short years? Where does one 81-year-old man find the strength? He, he must have help. The fellowship must be helping him. That's the only solution. What, what an unbelievable, inspirational old boy. I, gen I really have a lot of love in my heart for Mr. Trebus. I think, he's, I think we can learn a lot from him. And if there's one thing in particular we can take away, I, I think it's this. Never, never forget, always remember just this one thing. 